Hello everyone and welcome to episode 16. I'm Gabe and today we'll be meeting the correctly restored Galar fossils as we battle the evil team leader. But first, here's a quick recap. In the last episode, you made it to Rassi Junction and challenged Chris, the ground type head researcher. The battle got you your fifth access code, along with invigorating Chris. It seems that Team Arc is held up in Creta Cliffs to the south, and a number of the researchers have decided to band together and oust them from the region. Heading towards Creta Cliff, Route 8 crosses a series of bridges between rocky islands. The other experienced researchers are now far ahead of you and you struggle to keep up. This route is populated by Rhinoseer, Asdazkite, Halusip, Stalactile, Rachnoon, Skergian, and the extremely rare Fossage. Team Arc grunts are scattered along the path. You're able to sneak by some of them, but others catch you in a battle. It is quite difficult, but you are eventually able to make it all the way to the end of Route 8, where you find Professor Ginkgo waiting. Oh good! You made it! Everyone else is already inside their camp. Here, let me heal your Pokémon. This is going to be a tough battle, but we need to find the Team Arc leader and stop her. Are you ready? Team Arc has a small camp at the edge of Creta Cliff. Their tents and trailers are all set up around a tall lighthouse. The other researchers are busy battling Team Arc grunts all around you, so you're able to slip past much of the action and progress to the base of the lighthouse where two grunts stand guard. Just where do you think you're going? You think you can just see the boss? Not a chance. We'll stop you and the nefarious research you're up to. They pull you into battle against their Nihilacene, Simirage, Plazaro, and Nanoboa but you defeat them and continue up the lighthouse. Each level of the lighthouse has tricky traps and additional grunts to dispatch of, but you're able to get all the way to the top. A huge collection of mysterious, levitating rocks are floating around the room. Psycad, the Team Arc leader, is surprised to see you and starts collecting the stones and putting them in their bag. <laughs> Another one of Ginkgo's lackeys trying to ruin my plans. You come into Team Ark's camp, cause all this destruction, and now you want to take me down? Kid, you have no idea what you are doing. I wish I had time to explain, but I need to get out of here before Ginkgo destroys this whole place. Out of my way. She throws out her first Pokemon, as Dazkite. You are able to take care of it pretty easily. Though next, she has a Troazult. It is extremely fast and quite challenging, but you manage to defeat it as well. Next, she uses another of the Galar fossils. Let us see what the water type will be. A lot of you could probably guess that the gargantuan armored fish Dunkleosteus would be the inspiration for this design. I mean, just looking at the existing Galar abominations, there is no doubt that that big old head is exactly the same. So, there isn't much to do other than translate it. I made sure to get the plate armor on its body, you know, just like the real animal. Though I did exaggerate the belly a bit, just to make it look a little goofier and friendlier. But yeah, not a ton to say about this. Other than I'm continuing to pull the shiny colors from the Galar fossil shinies. Which, they're fun, they're grayscale with little pops of color. Okay, here is Dunklovish. The Strong Jaw Pokemon. This colossal fish Pokemon was recently revived completely in the Paleon region. Dunklovish have heavy armor plates on their body that th let them ignore most attacks. Though not particularly fast, they can cut through the hulls of ships with their powerful bite. And its ability is, of course, Strong Jaw, and that boosts the power of biting moves. Dunklovish is a tank. Well, I mean, more accurately, it is a, like a submarine, probably, but it takes some serious work to get through its defenses. Alright, next up, Psycad throws out the Dragon-type fossil. 
we finally get to have a Stegosaurid in here. It is a little bit of a shame that the existing Galar rear of this design doesn't have a Thagomizer, uh, which are, you know, the kind of iconic tail spikes, but the rest of it still reads like a Stegosaurid. In particular, I wanted to pull in the huge shoulder spikes seen on Gigantospinosaurus and Kentrosaurus. The shoulder spikes just, you know, give a little more character instead of just having the back row of plates. Oh, I also did something funny with the head, rounding it into something that's almost a ball. You know, there's always been a thing with calling Stegosaurus dumb, you know, with teeny tiny little walnut sized brains, so I gave it a pea-shaped head since it's a pea brain. Honestly, this was more necessary just to keep the design from looking too much like just a cartoon Kentrosaurus. Oh, and the shiny colors were super fun here because for some reason the dragon fossil's shiny is just super dark. Anyway, here is Drakento, the spike plate Pokemon. The front half of this ancient dragon Pokemon was finally recovered in the Paleon region. Drakento are not particularly bright and can be seen in the wild mindlessly eating all vegetation in front of them. They are very gentle but aren't always aware of how dangerous their sharp plates and spikes can be. Its ability is own tempo, and that prevents it from being confused. It has some very pokey defenses to get through, but luckily its dragon typing is no match for your ice types, and Psycad is forced to send out her final Pokemon. Now this fossil part gives us the least amount to work from. I mean, it's really just some snow, a little tail, and a couple flippers. There's a couple different directions I could have gone with this, and maybe I will share with you the beta design, which was a horribly proportioned Mosasaurus, but after throwing that aside, I landed on something that would serve as the ancestor to Lapras. We're gonna tweak the ice and snow on its back so that it hints at the shell that Lapras would eventually get, and plop a little lapras horn on its head too, but, to play up the more primal inspiration, we're pulling in the long, exposed teeth of other plesiosaurs, which, you know, also kind of works for the ice typing since they look a little bit like little icicles. And of course, the shiny gets a nice muted color palette. Here is Laparcto, the iceberg Pokemon. Once this ice type Pokemon was correctly restored in the Paleon region, Researchers realized it is the ancestor to Lapras. Laparcto are less willing to ferry people on its back, but once it trusts its trainer, they will gladly take them as far as they wish to go. Trainers are advised to wear snow pants as their ice shells make for a frigid trip. And its ability is then Ice Body, that restores some HP during hail. Laparcto hits hard and takes down much of the rest of your team before you're finally able to knock it out. Psycad stumbles back to the lighthouse railing. No! How could this be? You're just a lowly assistant! If only you knew what was really going on here. There are answers on Route 9. Psycad, enough with your lies! This ends now! Professor Ginkgo and Beth have arrived. Unfortunately, Psycad has healed her as Dazkite, and together they leap from the top of the lighthouse and glide away. No! Ah, we were so close. We'll find her. But nice work, kid. I didn't expect you to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. We're gonna clean up this team arc camp, but you should meet me back in Ordo Outpost at the Fighting Type Research Building. I'm looking forward to seeing your battle skills firsthand. With the team arc camp disbanded, you know that you could use your Pokeride signal to fly back to Ordo Outpost, but you do remember an unexplored route west of Tritown that you now have the time to explore. And maybe Psycad was right, maybe there is something important there for you to find. You have Lofty and take you back, and we'll start in on Route 9 in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's episode, and especially let me know which of these Galar fossils is your favorite. 
A big thank you to Vanessa for being our team arc leader, along with Aaron and Beth. All right, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.